Hi, I'm Jay Lee. I'm a vice chairman of the Foscon Technology Group. Today, I'm very pleased to share with you about the journey of a lighthouse factory using industrial AI. First, I will talk about the definition and the strategy on automation, digital, and intelligent systems. And second, I will highlight how industrial AI can help to build a smart, resilient system. The third example, I will use the World Economic Forum Lighthouse Factory. Uh, Foscon has received a number of awards for the past several years. And I would like to talk about a journey, how we get there, and where are we going from now. First, let's have a brief overview about Foscon. And built in 1972 by former chairman uh, Terry Cool. Uh, the, uh, so far, Foscon is uh, ranked number 22 in global Fortune 500 based on this year's ranking as one of the leaders in EMS uh, contract manufacturing with over a million employees. Uh, but the core competency of Foscon is precision and high volume manufacturing. Of course, strong up to customization. And uh, currently the company is leading industrial AI and 5G and uh, high performance computing and to drive the smart manufacturing as a next generation transformation also to develop a smart uh, digitization transformation as well. Uh, when the new board was formed in 2019, uh, the, our new chairman, uh, Yang Liu, and took the leadership and to work with the, our operation committee to drive a new excellence, which is uh, FASCON 1.0, FASCON 2.0, and FASCON 3.0. 1.0 is to do a, a self-assessment about where are we good at it, and what are the area we need to improve or totally change. Number two is accelerate the digital transformation to using data to make decisions in many things we do, including procurement, manufacturing, customer services, et cetera, et cetera. And FASCON 3.0, of course, is to create new industry base for the scale of the FASCON can grow for the next uh, decades. In FASCON 3.0, obviously, we're talking about three new industry platforms like uh, EV, elect electrification, and digital health, and uh, XYZ robotics, all kinds. But the core technology, and there's no surprise, we're talking about AI and semiconductor and 5G and 6G. So we call it 3 plus 3. So the 3 plus 3 is a new journey and they're going to drive the company f forward. So let's talk about first, what is the definition and uh, about automation and the digitization intelligence system. Sometimes people can use the same term, but mean different things. This chart is what we call the productivity transformation chart. Typically when we uh, managing our operations could be a, in a, a production system and could be a management system, we have a visible problem and also we have invisible problems. So of course, in visible problems, we do continuous improvements. Eventually, we solve the problem, but optimally, we want to avoid them by either model the relationship or model this a known, a trending, right, or the frequency, the time. But another thing we want to find the relationship between those invisible data, that how you model those by using uh, deep learning or a, a, a deep mining, and so eventually those relationships can be modeled the root cause, also based on probabilistic a prediction. So then you can avoid those risks, and potentially by using a a uh, optimization optimization approach. So the blue space, right? Those blue area is what we call the transformation opportunity for us in the future manufacturing. Well, first, let's look at the automation, intelligence system, and digital system. Sometimes people confuse, right? But automation system defined as one sentence. is to do things humans don't want to do or they don't do well, like a dirty, boring, dangerous job, welding, yeah, forging, and uh, stuff like that. So you want the people painting. You want to eliminate those, right? And, uh, oh, they don't do well, right? They're not repeatable enough, like a... Second, intelligence system is a system that can do people cannot do. For example, I want a human being to inspect 100 small holes in one second. That's impossible. You blink your eyes, finished. You can't even look at anything. And digital system is how can human using data 
to make decisions. Today, we're using experience to make decisions, right? But we need data to prove the decision can be explainable, can be repeatable, and can be benchmarkable. So therefore, without data, even you make great decisions, but your organization cannot, your organization cannot sustain, which is a problem. But however, the three systems, they're connected together. They're not separated, right? For example, automation system, digital system, and intelligence systems can build together. But of course, the source of the, each of the is different. For example, automation systems built based on the, a very good practices in Lean, in, uh, and then five S's in Poco Yoke is a mistake proving, and also the Six Sigma. But digital system, you need to know how to understand the relationship between those invisible decision parameters. Eventually, intelligent system, you want to predict and avoid, avoid, right? That's what it is. But of course, they also can have a closed loop system. For example, we want to take the automation system to make it become even more resilient. So you take the historical data and you understand the what happened in the past based on Pareto chart, you understand the relationship root causes, then you connect to the right parameters, right sensors, analyze the relationship, then use algorithms to analyze what you can do to predict. Then you want to and prevent from happening by creating value for the company and for your customers. So that's called closed loop data and value flow in three systems. But why are we talking about this? But the reason is we want to move forward based on what we've been working on, like a smart automation system. And eventually we want to make more resilient automation system because uh, automation is not one-time job. It's continuous improvement job. It's a competitive system. How to make these high volume manufacturing become re resilient and sustainable and competitive. That is the key for FASCAM. Now, industry AI and smart resilient system, how it connect together. Again, when we're talking about digitization, there are three elements we have to talk about. One is the people, right? One is the things. One is a decision support system. So for example, people, we're managing things. We're managing machine, we're managing parts, we're managing something. We assume when something happened, the thing will tell us. The machine will tell us something wrong. No, they will not tell us. They will tell the first, their production management system, MES or ERP, then inform people. That's what the system. Today, the phone connect to APP, we call location-based service. If something happened, the APP inform you a message. So, but, so people is called internet, internet people. Things called internet of things, right? Then industrial system connect together, so industrial internet. This is a very, very critical, clear definition. I think a lot of people misunderstood these things. They thought oh, inter the industrial internet is just internet of machine. That's not industrial internet. You need to have a management system to drive your excellence, not machine or not internet. So eventually, industrial AI is a key function to integrate the data among the three elements and to provide such intelligence for our decision-making process. Now, so what's the difference between AI and industrial AI? AI is a cognitive science. It's a very popular in machine learning, in image processing, in natural language processing. But the problem is it's ad hoc and black art. For example, engineer, one engineer develop an algorithm, another engineer using the same algorithm, if you give them same set of data, but they have two, two different results because try and error. They may select different features, label different features. So we, in, in engineering system, we must have a systematic discipline. It's not do as you like. Do you must do. You have to do the right things, not just do the things right. So which means industrial AI is a systematic discipline. We focus on how to develop, repeatedly validate and deploy such a things. Whether you do it, other people do it, result should be the same. So someone can continue, sustain, right? But that's very important for industrial AI. 
But of course, when we talk about industrial AI, we talk about how we assess your capability in your company. First of all, you got people, things, and management system, three, right? But how can your people move up? Today, if you ask your company people, employees, and they have a problem, it's okay, go to find the data. Wow, that's a big task for them. How to find data? You make a telephone call, you pull the Excel sheet, you get data from the factory, from customer side, you, you interview people. It's all kinds of means to find data. Now, how to use the data? Ah, that's even tougher. What data should you use? Should you use everything you get? Should you get, select those best, a, a Pareto chart, 80% of valuable or 20% most important? Well, it's a lots of things, right? Depending on who you are. So scientists will use everything, but problem is if you don't understand the background of the data context, you're probably using wrong data. Data is useful, but it not be usable because they did not label them properly, the lack of a background. So often I call the data as 3B, bad, broken background. The bad data is useless, right? Broken data, sometimes you have to label them right. And background, you need a context. So eventually, the use the right tools. How do you select the right tool? You can use a a deep learning, you can use a, a, a different type of learning tool, but what is the best to such a case? And what, even you analyze it, what's the meaning? What's the meaning to you? What can you do, right? The prediction, what does that mean? Pre, five day prediction, five hour prediction, what does that mean? Eventually, what to, to do to avoid problems? Same thing for the things, what are you connecting? How you convert data to a reusable format? and how you connect to the cloud, shareable space. Where do you store? Who has data rights to use it? Cognition, who should see it? You and I have different jobs. Should we see the same thing, or should we see different things? And then eventually, what, who's doing the action? Who's doing the commanding? Who's doing the action? Who's doing the follow-up? So eventually, are you doing the management experience, experience-based management? Are you doing IT-based management? Are you doing OT-based management? Are you doing real-time based management or are you doing predictive management? So we're talking about whether the talents, technology, and tools. The three things for three things, right? So you need to compete today or you want to compete tomorrow. Lead the world. So again, this is a very important part of a self-assessment for your company. Of course, we have to select the right tool for the right decisions. When the system is very complicated, large number of operations, high speed, real time. You need to select the speed with precision versus complexity versus uncertainty. So the different algorithm you have to select. Eventually, there are many tools available in the uh, analytical space, but you, have, you need to know them, but you don't have to understand them clearly. But you need to use the right one. So therefore, somebody has to give you a good comparison table so you can select the right tools. Select the right tool for the right application. For example, if data quality is no good, if the uh, decision time speed is very short, very fast, right? But that's important. Now, let's talk about what's a resilient system. Resilient system is a, a company has to survive to, in different type of conditions, it, those unforeseen impacts, and adapt to new order, new configuration. So we, we need to know resilient going to be one of the a, our quality in the future for company to predict to survive in, in the unpredictable uncertainty environment like today. Today we have many company cannot receive chips logistically and uh, they, the, the, the new car cannot push out because of lack of parts, uh, the, the demand and supply balancing. So therefore, there are a lot of issues. But on my needs, you have to, from market point of view, you have to be able to predict those issue conditions. From operation point of view, you have to be able to predict and up, prioritize and optimize. And from organization point of view, you need to be able to synchronize and configure, self-heal, and, uh, and self-protect. Doesn't matter from cyber security point of view or from the uh, market disturbance point of view. But same thing for production system. Same thing, right? Your system has to be able to configure based on the, uh, for example, inconsistent labors. Right now, when you have a new, uh, during the pandemic, COVID pandemic, and some employee cannot come, some new employee will arrive, 
because of incompatible, inconsistent skill sets, how the system can reconfigure and rather to retrain them take a long time. So when we say smart resilient manufacturing system, it's about how the system can uh, absorb and tolerate those unforeseen issues, such as uh, a geopolitical pandemic, unknowns, and the natural disaster, etc. So the system doesn't matter logistics or demand and supply side. The production side has to be able to adapt and configure, right? That's what we call recon resilient manufacturing system. But for FASCON, we need to understand the predict, not just the, the market, but also the supplies and the capacity and also logistics. Also, we have to prevent the impact of inconsistent labor and skill sets in different countries. First, third, we have to prevent the unknowns. We don't even know what happened next, right? So that is a very strong, smart manufacturing resilience system. Well, let me give example how uh, the journey we have took and to drive the excellence toward a WEF, World Economic Forum, Lighthouse Factory. Why we started this? 2018 <clears throat> company had opportunity to transform to Foxconn Industrial Internet. A new company was formed. At that time, the motivation is to take to leverage what we have in the physical global operation. And the Foxconn has 175,000 machine tools, over 80,000 robots, and uh, 1,800 SMT lines. But these things, assets, once they connected, we can do many things to understand the quality, efficiency, and also redundant a, a labor to apply to maintain those machines or factories. So we took the initiative to drive the data industrial internet to develop our 5G industrial AI cloud, micro cloud, to drive them to uh, understanding the management priority and also the importance of a competitiveness. So to drive the value, efficiency, and quality, and the customer uh, a interactions. Of course, if we take the maintenance opportunity, uh, I've been in, I'm the founding director for NSF Intelligent Maintenance System, uh, one of IUCRC centers since 2001. Uh, so during the last 20 years, you have seen that uh, a, a, when you have uncertainty and complexity issue involved in a production system, you have to do a traditional condition-based maintenance to reliability center maintenance. Eventually, you can prevent to prevent uh, preventive maintenance, or you want to design a robust system. But that's not good enough, because eventually prognostic and health management, PHM, became a new community. But to move next decades, we need to be able to develop a smart maintenance, a resilient, and uh, even immune. So we have a strong tolerance about those unforeseen issues. This is very critical. So eventually, we took maintenance as one example the factory have uh, so many machines, or the, your supply chain broken. How you physically predict and self-aware and self-maintain to co find the competing and comparable part, parts, you can easily replace the current ones, right? Those called self-resilient system. But to do that, you need a strong evidence of the finding those relationship using data, right? Just experience itself is not good enough. Of course, there are also methodology to managing we have different methodology in the factory managing these operations, right? For example, you have many similar machines. You don't have to monitor every one of them. You can use similarity-based, or you have a fleet of machines operation worldwide. Then you can take the similarities and to do a cluster-based reason, uh, a reasoning or mining or learning. Eventually decide the relationship and uh, a matrix to find the best similarity and make decisions and to focus on the right problems. For example, for example, we have a many machines. We take a peer-to-peer -peer approach, uh, find out same operation, uh, same recipe, or same cycles. We compare them. Then you have a many machines, you compare them by cluster, each cluster, each cluster, each cluster. You select the, the one that perform the worst. Then focus on the worst machine first. So you have a thousand machines, you quickly find those 10 or 8 worst machines. Then you can easily focus them, not just focus on 1,000 machines, 100 machines. Impossible. You don't have the time. Even you do it, probably waste lots of money and time. Eventually, that is a very important called smart AI learning system, not to do deep learning, but do fast learning. 
So based on the previous years, <coughs> we have developed strong methodology to use a co-matrix matrix prediction and also trajectory similarity-based prediction. Those methods being well developed and published. I think people can took easily uh, the, the, the reference and to understand what, that, what they are. Now, the World Economic Forum is one opportunity 2018 and uh, WEF Davos uh, launch to benchmark the best factory in the world in Industry 4.0. To 2019, January, Foscon 1 operation got selected to be the one of the lighthouse factory. And the fa factory has a strong uh, AI, industrial AI, and uh, deployed improved efficiency 30%. Reduce inventory and also reduce those redundant labor, 92 percent. This factory we. A, a worry-free factory because human beings don't have to continue monitoring. 2021, another factory in Chengdu got selected to be another lighthouse factory. So far, the 69 lighthouse based on March 2021 uh, in the world global DWEF lighthouse networks. Of course, <coughs> we in Foscon, our target is to build 20 lighthouse sites by end of this year. And be, because we want to use this, a network lighthouse within our organization to benchmark the best and resilient capabilities. But of course, uh, as a global company, as many other companies, we have to be able to harvest the data from anywhere. Eventually build this cyber factory. Cyber factory is where called data driven and uh, a connected a operation and you can be anywhere. But the purpose is that once you have a data in your hand, you can model the, a, a lot of a key performance. Like I'd like to present the FastCon a stream of quality methodology uh, we call it stream of quality, which means you connect the quality stream across a, a manufacturing system. Each stage of inspection, which involves a number of a parameter like uh, human beings and machines and materials, variation or different methods, and could be a different environment. And so, but you take this a influence factors together and you connect them. You can model the root cause and relationships. You even have a stream of quality map. Uh, that's very important to predict the relationship, find those invisibles and the potential opportunities. When you have a process flow, could be a something, you have first you, you classify those data sets. Second, you label, you segment them. You select the relevant or priority. Third, you decompose them to different root cause or importance of linkage. Number four, you analyze those important ones or worst ones. Then you share those results to the people who need to know. Eventually, you make those action followers, action doer, worry free. Right? That is what we call the sixth flow of the stream of quality system. This is very critical. This chart is about the evolution of quality methodology. As we can see from the last uh, a century, and you can see the change of the impact of a statistical process control and the earlier work in, in the just-in-time and Toyota production systems, eventually Six Sigma, then eventually Lean, and today we're talking about the stream of quality. How to take quality as stream so we can manage in the, the uh, big data resources into one connected value system. Conclusion, uh, we have a book called Industrial AI Book, and uh, this book is published in uh, 2020. Uh, that could be a good reference, and if someone's interested, again, thank you for your attention, and uh, hope this book can be useful for you and to as a, a reference for my presentation. And as you can see, more relevant research from this link, Google Scholar or a research gate. Thank you. Continue watching those machines so that we call lights out factory. We turn off lights and uh, to challenge human and go beyond what you can do, right? So you use data to make decisions, not use eyes or using experience. But that is very important 
part of a journey we learn.